this was the maiden journey with my new off-road caravan. Due to COVID restrictions, only a limited number of border posts were open. Being situated not far from the border, a northerly routing via Elisras, now the Palale, to the border post of Kroplosbrüch and onward to the Rhino Sanctuary was the most convenient one. Setting up camp and rigging the caravan was not difficult and quite easily accomplished by one person. Being October and well before the rainy season, the trees did not carry leaves yet. There was not much shade to speak of. Daytime temperatures reached 38 degrees Celsius, but it cooled down somewhat during the night. Sleeping inside the caravan turned out to be comfortable, as good ventilation was provided by the open windows. The Kama Rhino Sanctuary is presently very dry. It is before the rainy season. We are now in October. The pans are almost dry. There is still a bit of water left and I wonder whether the parks authorities are not pumping water. Lack of rain was the reason for the grazing being still poor. A number of Plainscape species such as red hartebeest, blue wildebeest and oryx antelope were difficult to spot. After good rains, those were normally observed in significant numbers. Either the management of the sanctuary had reduced their numbers during winter, or they were grazing in other areas of the reserve. Water holes in the open pans are located in such a way that it is difficult to watch the animals from a close distance. A long focal lens is required to bring the animals closer. This unfortunately also magnifies the mirages caused by the heat during the day. The campsite was surrounded by lots of trees. No surprise then that there were many birds about. It is difficult to film birds though. They tend to be always on the move 
a lung really focusing on them before they fly off to another spot. The only method to force them into a tight spot is sacrificing some of the breakfast cereals. Squirrel must have misunderstood that the cereals were not meant for it, but for the birds. Or, living mostly in the trees, it thought it came close enough to being considered a bird. Rhino Sanctuary lives up to its name. White rhinos are seen everywhere and in reasonably large numbers. The 
dominant species in the sanctuary is the square-lipped rhino. At any time of the day one can spot these prehistoric looking animals. It is hard to believe that they are on the brink of extinction just because some Asian countries see a medicinal value in their horns. Rhinos have poor eyesight, but their sense of smell and hearing is well developed. The rhinos in the sanctuary are used to vehicles and allow watching them from close range. Similar to elephants, a mud bath serves protecting the skin from parasites. Having visited the Kama Rhino Sanctuary already a few times, I never managed to spot a hook-lipped rhino. There are only a few in the sanctuary. I was always told that they are predominantly night active. This time I was very lucky to see one in bright daylight. Night active is a misconception. Hook-lipped rhinos are browsers and feed on the leaves of bushes. Most part of the sanctuary is densely covered with bushes, hence the low probability to spot one. In contrast, the square lip rhino is grazer and feeds mostly in open grasslands. There is a bird hide at Karma. I want to have a look what I can spot this afternoon. This morning I saw some zebra drinking. There is some water but uh, it's green colored due to algae. Birds are not in abundance due to lack of food. It hasn't rained yet. So in other seasons there will be more. Bird height not only allows spotting birds, but also animals from close quarters. It is my preferred place. Not traveling around in a vehicle, but watching game from the comfort of a height. Not being aware of the presence of humans, animals tend to behave pretty natural.
Indian war talks are going through the daily routine of wallowing in the mud. This mother is teaching the little one what to do and where to find such a treat. Despite having visited the Kama Rhino Sanctuary a few times, it is always a memorable experience to see these magnificent creatures thriving under the protection of a sanctuary and the Botswana Defense Force, which conducts regular patrols to prevent poaching. 